I want to thank those of you who have continued to pray for my son, Michael Winston, who is fighting against cancer. We had to pluck up and move quickly to Memphis for his treatment at St. Jude Children's Hospital. And that means we have to rebuild our studio here. And you can see that we're recording outside today. Uh, and there's a major storm front moving in. So this ought to be fun. And I ask you to pray with us and for us that we could quickly finish our, our new studio here. And if you want to help us financially, boy, we need the help. We've, we've gotten most of it done, but we still, need, uh, we still need to finish. All right. Let's talk about the most powerful man in the world, a patriot, somebody defending the fatherland, somebody who's following his own course, who is who was voted the most powerful man in the world by Forbes magazine. Do you know? You ready? Russian President Vladimir Putin. Yeah. The Russian President Vladimir Putin voted the most powerful man in the world. Behind him, President Barack Hussein Obama. And behind him, Chinese leader Xi Jinping. And then in fourth place, the Roman Pope, the Roman Pontiff, Pope Francis the first. Boy, oh boy, nothing could better define the struggle of good and evil, right and wrong, the church militant versus militant socialists and militant patriots who are not anchored to an ethical system that pleases Almighty God than the pick of those four men. Let's look at it, but first I want to read the opening two paragraphs of the four magazine article, Forbes magazine, where they introduced him as the winner. Because I, I want to show you the idiocy of what's going on here. Power has been called many things. Pretty isn't one of them. No one would call Vladimir Putin a good guy. In 2014, he strong-armed his way into possession of Crimea and waged an ugly proxy war in neighboring Ukraine during which an almost certainly Russian supplied service to air missile downed a civilian jetliner. But as the undisputed, unpredictable, and unaccountable head of an energy-rich, nuclear-tipped state, no one would ever call him weak. So who's more powerful, the omnipotent head of a feisty former superpower or the handcuffed head of the most dominant country in the world? For the second year running, our votes went with the Russian president as the world's most powerful person. All right, number one, what idiot in the editorial team of Forbes would call the Soviet, or rather the Rus Russia, a former superpower? Yes, the Soviet Union broke up, okay? But Russia still has a massive nuclear arsenal. Russia still has arguably the largest oil fields in the world, okay? Russia has a very large population. To say that they're a former superpower is foolishness, all right? To not admit that they are a superpower is foolishness. That's number one. People will argue with me, all right? This is, people want to say that it's a, a unipolar world, that it's a, there's only one world superpower. It simply isn't true, people. It simply isn't true. What, who gets to define a superpower? Chinese, the Chinese government's, uh, the Chinese economy is already bigger than ours. All right? The Chinese have nuclear missiles that can hit America's shores. The Chinese just recently purchased two aircraft carriers. The Chinese have seven billion people. The Chinese are building a military infrastructure at an astounding rate, have millions of men in arms. I mean, the, and, and they are creating hegemony in the area. So there's all this talk now because Russia has just agreed at the 11th hour to build not one, but two nuclear facilities for Iran. Russia knows that they're going to make nuclear weapons with these. And Russia knows that Iran is concerned with the great Satan, America, and with Israel, not with Russia. And the only nation where Russia has a, a foothold in the Middle East is Syria. And Syria is a puppet for who? Iran, all right? Iran props up the Syrian government, and now Russia is saying, we're going to help you, we're going to help you build a nuclear power plant. So if Israel or the U.S. decides to take out a nuclear power plant where the Russians are working and Russian people die, 
Do you think that's going to come into the equation? You bet you it is. And then whoever wrote, wrote this said that, you know, they, they took Crimea. Well, Crimea has historically belonged to the Russians, okay? We took Hawaii, didn't belong to us. We've taken a good bit of chunks of land. We took Florida, didn't belong to us, all right? We, we took large swaths of land from the Mexicans. The, the hypocrisy, the folly of articles like this that are, um, I want to say jingoistic or they're also where you fear hegemony, xenophobic. I, I don't know what to call these things, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, the Russian leader is a patriot. He's defending the land of his fathers. So remember, we went over that in yesterday's show, what patriotism means. If you've missed it, look in the archives and watch it. The true meaning of patriotism. And President Obama is not a patriot. All right? Unless you want to say that he's defending the land of his fathers in Kenya, or he's defending his father's communist socialist leanings, his true daddy. All right? But Obama is clearly not an American patriot. And Vladimir Putin is a Russian patriot, defending the fatherland. I've got to take a break. I want to bring this around to you and I being a part of the church militant and looking at those four people and the battles that are at stake. Don't go away. You have two choices. I mean, you can try to raise your children by design, or you will raise them by default. There are no perfect parents. We're going to get it wrong sometimes. If we have a plan, we've got a better chance of getting it right in the long run. There is something deep within the heart of every human being that longs for parental acceptance and approval. When does a boy become a man? Get a group of guys around and ask them that question. I don't think there's a certain age. Some men stay boys their whole life. I would say, uh, what? 16, 18 years old. Wow, that's a good question. When they get bar mitzvah? Well, I think when he has a child. So I just became at 56, yeah, 56 years old. Without the power of the Holy Spirit changing us and giving us power over our sin, we can't hope to be the dads that our kids need us to be.